By now you know I love Spanish. One of the reasons I love Spanish so much is it's fast. We can usually say stuff in Spanish with fewer letters or words than we can in English. Of course, there are examples the other way too, but for the most part, I find Spanish to be a speedier language. One of the first and most effective ways you learn to speed things up is to remove the subject pronouns for the most part. You eat is just comes. You don't have to say to comes. Everybody will know from the conjugation exactly who eats. Well, today we're gonna speed things up a little more. And even though this tripped me up a lot when I was first exposed to it, that's because I didn't take the time to focus and learn it quickly. It's really not that hard. Today, we're talking about reflexive verbs. Hola, soy Jordan, and this is a Spanish quickie. Fast, easy Spanish lessons from somebody who speaks your language. Okay, reflexive verbs. These always gave me a problem for some reason. I'm not sure why, they're not that hard. Maybe it's that I never took even a few minutes to really focus on them and figure them out. Maybe because, like usual, most Spanish books and courses don't teach them very well. Now that I've got them down pretty well, I know reflexive verbs are kind of weird for we gringos for a few different reasons. Most books and courses just don't get that. They don't get us. Let's start at the beginning. A reflexive verb is just a normal verb, but when the subject and the receiver of the action of the verb is the same. Just a warning, if you haven't seen the videos direct object pronouns and indirect object pronouns, you should do that then come back here. This video won't make much sense if you don't understand those videos. So again, a verb is reflexive when the subject is the same as the receiver of the action. This is usually the direct or indirect object, but not always. I see him. That's not reflexive. The subject is I and the action is going to, the direct object is him. They're different. But I see myself, that's reflexive because the subject, I, is the same as who's getting the action, the direct object, myself or me. Notice how to see can be normal or reflexive. In English, this reflexiveness is usually communicated with the words myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, and themselves. Also in English, we don't really use this so much. I love myself, I know myself, I hate myself? Well, in Spanish, this reflexiveness is usually communicated with pronouns. Yes, more pronouns. And furthermore, in Spanish, reflexive verbs are used way more often than in English. First, I'm going to show you the infinitive form of a reflexive verb. Then we'll get to the pronouns. Then I'll show you how and when to use them. Remember, a normal verb always ends in AR, ER, or IR. And in Spanish, pretty much any verb can be reflexive. To take a normal verb and make it reflexive, just add SE to the end after the AR, ER, or I are. That's the infinitive form of a reflexive verb. So ver is to see and verse is to see oneself. It works like that for virtually every verb, though some are more common than others. Duchar is to shower and ducharse is to shower oneself. See how this works? Now in Spanish, like I said, they use reflexive verbs way more than we do in English. Way more. Anytime the action is at all going back to the same person, it's reflexive. Even when the translation in English doesn't have myself, yourself, himself, or anything like that. So I take a shower would be meducho. Literally, I shower myself. You take a shower is te duchas. Literally, you shower yourself. Now, two things are going on here, even though at first it seems like only one thing's going on. First, they use a reflexive verb when we don't. They say meducho, we say I shower or I take a shower, not I shower myself. Literal translations rarely work with reflexive verbs. Ducho is just not correct. Meducho is the correct way to say I take a shower. Okay, the second thing, and this part kind of sucks. To really see what's going on here, we need to take a look at the third person. I take a shower is meducho. You take a shower is te duchas. Those should both make perfect sense to you. Me and te sure look like the direct object pronouns you learned a few lessons ago. They look like them, but they're not. He takes a shower. It's not el lo ducha, and it's not el le ducha. He takes a shower in Spanish is el se ducha. Here's why. Reflexive verbs get their own pronouns. They're different. Check them out. The reason you couldn't tell in the first and second person, our first two examples, is because they're the same. Direct object pronouns, indirect object pronouns, and reflexive pronouns are all the same in these top two rows. It's only in the third person here that they're different. Remember, it's lo, la, and los, las for direct objects, then le or les for indirect objects. Now it's se when the verb is reflexive. If you're confused, don't worry. You should be. Let's look at some examples to really drive this home. I see him, not reflexive. The subject 
subject is I, but the direct object is him. So lo beo, I see him. Lo is the direct object pronoun. He sees her, not reflexive. The subject is he, but the direct object is her. So el la be. Again, la is a direct object pronoun. But he sees himself, that's reflexive. The subject and object are the same. He sees himself. So it's el se be. So him is lo or le when the verb isn't reflexive, but when it is reflexive, him is se. Same on the plural side. I see them in the mirror would be los veo en el espejo, and it's not reflexive. But they see themselves in the mirror is ellos se ven en el espejo. It's reflexive. Perhaps the most common example of this, you've probably heard this before, me llamo. That's how you say my name is, then you say your name. So me llamo Jordan is my name is Jordan, but literally that means I call myself Jordan. It's reflexive. So his name is Juan would be se llama Juan. He calls himself Juan. But if I have a nickname for Juan and call him Johnny, I could say lo llamo Johnny. I call him Johnny. That's a direct object pronoun instead of a reflexive pronoun because it's not reflexive. See how this works? So if you want to ask what's your name, it would be como te llamas. And what's his name would be como se llama. What are their names would be como se llaman. Llaman. At the beginning, I always use this as my prototype. If I had a problem with another word, I'd say me llamo Jordan or como te llamas in my head to figure things out. Then just apply that to the word I was having a problem with. Now the fact that reflexive verbs are used so much is a little weird or a lot weird. It takes more than a little getting used to. For example, I sit, that's reflexive. So me siento, literally I sit myself. With sit, by the very nature of the word, the subject does it to themselves. The action is going back to the subject. So he sits is se sienta. We sit is no sentamos. Before this video, you probably would have thought I sit is just siento. I sure did, but it's not. The style of speaking in Spanish uses reflexive verbs a lot when we wouldn't in English. They don't say the equivalent of I sit, they say the equivalent of I sit myself. What really gave me a problem is a sentence like this. I wash my hair every day. That's reflexive. Me lavo el pelo cada día. Even though the direct object is el pelo, what do I wash? My hair? The action of the verb is still going back to me. So it's reflexive. Me lavo el pelo. I wash my hair. I know that's really weird, but I promise once you use it a lot, you do get used to it. Notice it's el pelo, not mi pelo. In Spanish, body parts usually use definite and indefinite articles, not possessive adjectives. So in English, I wash my hair. My is a possessive adjective taught in the video called possessive adjectives. But in Spanish, for body parts and some other stuff too, the is used. So, me lavo el pelo. He washes his hair would be se lava el pelo. Starting to get the hang of this? You just have to practice it a bit, then you'll know that words like lavar are often reflexive. Me lavo, te lavas, se lava, nos lavamos. Another common verb that is often reflexive and gave me some problems at first is poner. Just poner is to put. So, I put the glasses on the table is pongo los vasos sobre la mesa. But when poner is reflexive, ponerse, it means to put on oneself, like to get dressed. So he puts on his shirt is se pone la camisa. He puts the shirt on himself. Understand? One of my favorite Spanish learning memories is the day the idea of the reflexive verb really sunk in. In English, I like to say, I wonder. I wonder if this. I wonder if that. Well, I didn't know how to say I wonder in Spanish. So one day I asked my friend Manuel, how do you say wonder? Like, I wonder. His answer blew me away. Me pregunto. Preguntar means to ask. So me pregunto is I ask me or I ask myself, which is what you do when you wonder, right? You ask yourself. I love it. I use that all the time now. I have so much more to say on reflexive verbs, but this video is running kind of long already. I'll make a second part in the future. But this is enough for now. You now know the gist. Like most things, this all becomes much clearer when you see it in action and practice it. So what I want you to do right now is go to the link on the screen. It's also below this video video and download the practice worksheet I made for you. Use that practice worksheet to become familiar with reflexive verbs and how they work. I think once you complete that worksheet, you'll feel much better about this. But do you see how Spanish's obsession with reflexive verbs can really speed things up? I take a shower, me ducho. I love myself, me amo. Once you get it through your head that reflexive verbs are used all the time, even when they're not in English, all you gotta worry about is using se for the third person. I take a shower, me ducho. Easy, just like before. But he takes a shower, se ducha. Okay, Hey, my friend, we've really been working hard on these pronouns. I buy it. You can say that. Lo compro. I buy the gift for him. You can say that too. Le compro el regalo. But I buy it for him. You can't say that. So in the next video, we're going to cover double object pronouns. When both a direct and indirect object pronoun are used in the same sentence or one of them with a reflexive pronoun. Then in the video after that, I've got something a little different planned. I'm going to introduce you to the most transparent grandmother in the world. But before we get to that video, 
all. See you next time. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo.